Hello friends, so I would like to give an update regarding the news that was breaking today in terms of the new peace deal that has been confirmed um, thanks to the Trump administration between Sudan and Israel but I also want to touch on the events that are taking place within the Mediterranean area I've got a few things prepared, I want to share that with you friends I also have some scriptures Please share this video. I think it's really important that this one really gets out. I thank you for your time and I thank you for watching. Let me show you what I have prepared. Okay friends, so you know like how in previous messages I've been talking with you regarding alliances, new regional alliances are being formed within the Middle East, North Africa, Asia, world over. This news piece that I'm going to share with you is a part of that. Now, what's taken place just two days ago, I think, is really, really significant because it's showing us that Turkey is posing a threat not only to its immediate neighbours, but also across the waters. Now, we've been watching on and off the situation with this fight, or let's say a race, for securing resources, natural gas, in the Mediterranean. Now this trilateral meeting, another one, the VAD several, has just taken place and what this is telling me, I believe, is that nations, let's say, well, for a start, Egypt, Cyprus, Greece, are considering possible confrontation and it will get messy if it continues with Turkey to prevent Turkey from exploring further within the Mediterranean seas now let me read this to you it's from Arab news and this alarmed me more than the Trump administration securing this Sudan and Israel normalization of relations between those two nations why is that because what's taking place here is showing us that there are nations friends who are not going to just allow turkey to do whatever it wants to do just like how i've expressed to you through the the um prophetic scriptures regarding the antichrist beast kingdom and how there will be nations who will resist him. So it won't be a one world order, a one world government. No, there will be nations, resilient nations, that will dislike and oppose the Antichrist. So what we're seeing now are, is all a part of the pieces of this puzzle being moved on the chessboard. And things are just speeding up so quickly. Let me read this to you, friends. Of course, you can join in with me because it's on the screen. A tripartite summit was held on Wednesday in the Cypriot capital, Nicosia, between Egyptian President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi and his Cypriot counterpart Nikos Anastasias, along with Greek Prime Minister Kriakos Mitsotakis. I butchered those names, didn't I? The summit, the eighth between the leaders of the three countries, focused on discussing means of cooperation and coordination regarding issues of concern. What are those issues? Turkey. Basan Radhi, the spokesman for the Egyptian presidency, said the tripartite summit was held to evaluate the development of cooperation among the three countries in various fields and to follow up on joint projects currently implemented as part of the trilateral cooperation mechanism as a load of jargon is basically saying how can we form a strong front and alliance to deter turkey from exploring and acting aggressively provocatively within our waters within our regions El Sisi underlined the need to enhance the tripartite cooperation mechanism with Greece and Cyprus saying we have decided to counter acts of provocation and violations in the Middle East. Who's doing that? Erdogan. He indirectly 
accused Turkey of committing violations, transferring mercenaries to conflict zones. It's talking about the fighters coming out of Syria, joining Azerbaijan in the conflict with Azerbaijan and Armenia, for to name one, and blackmailing Europe with the issue of immigration. I've talked about all these subjects that he's just mentioned already in previous videos. He's a provocator, Erdogan, and he has threatened blackmailed Europe with releasing immigrants who are refugees out of the Syrian conflict let's say ISIS into Europe unless uh, the one has his way with exploration in the region remember friends 2020 is what is on his agenda and he's not going to let anyone get in the way we have signed the founding charter of the Eastern Mediterranean Gas Forum, he added. Regarding the Syrian crisis, the president said, we reject any foreign existence on Syrian territories. Meanwhile, the Cypriot president stressed that Turkey was causing more tension in the area, jeopardizing regional stability, interfering in the Syrian crisis and sending mercenaries to Libya and the nagorno karabakh region. In a nutshell, that is exactly what Turkey's doing. He's got his finger in every pie. Why? Because he sees himself as the caliph of the Ummah and he's going to try to secure his position inevitably before 2023. So the nations in that region, what do we expect them to do knowing that Erdogan has not kept this a secret? He's made it very plain, very clear what his intentions are so we're going to expect to see nations across that region of the mediterranean making alliances let me get my world map i'll come to that in a minute i'm going to show you something there so we can expect these nations to form an alliance i'd say include italy as far as Spain eventually friends but because Turkey's meddling there meddling there and in Iraq and in this region here and threatening Greece he wants to dominate the region where the waters are the Black Sea the Mediterranean Sea remember the beast where it rises from it rises from the seas let's go back to that report friends We underline the need to take strong measures against those who support militant and terrorist groups in the region. He pointed out that trilateral relations were not against any state, but rather aimed to achieve peace and stability in the Middle East. Oh, we're going to keep hearing these words repeatedly now, aren't we? Over and over. Peace and security, prosperity and stability. This is what the nations are telling us is what they seek after. But it's not going to bring any peace in the region. Even for Israel. Israel thinks it's entering into these peace deals with the Arab world. It's just not going to end in peace. It's going to increase the threat of confrontation and war. He also called on Turkey to respect international laws and not to violate Cypriot so sovereignty. We discussed means of enhancing tripartite corporations in various fields, especially energy. Of course, because it's resources. We welcome the establishment of the Eastern Mediterranean Gas Forum, he said, while re reiterating the need to stop the flow of illegal immigration via the Mediterranean. Friends, do you understand what's happening? The threat, let's say, for example, illegal immigration. This is not just your refugees who need a home. Let's let Europe welcome them in. No, these are potential jihadist terrorists that he, Erdogan, wants to unleash on Europe. Blackmail is exactly the right word. The Cypriot president also described Turkey's hunt for gas in Greek waters in the Eastern Mediterranean as illegal. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Mitsotaki said that the practices of the Turkish leadership were unfair to its people. We don't want to exclude Turkey, but its practices lead to that action he warned this is the eighth such tripartite summit between since 2014 it coincides with greece's call 
on the EU to consider suspending the customs union agreement with Turkey. Do you think Germany will allow that, friends? I doubt that. Greek Foreign Minister Nikos delivered a letter to the European Neighbourhood Policy and Enlargement Commissioner Oliver to consider the measure as a response to Turkey's repeated violations of the agreement in addition to its unilateral measures of gas and oil excavations in the eastern Mediterranean. But earlier today, this was reported on Ahval. NATO chief announces Turkey-Greece agreement to cancel upcoming naval exercises. Akar said his Greek counterpart Nikos had also expressed support for Turkey's proposal. However, a statement issued by the Greek Defence Ministry said the proposal had come from Stolenberg. Okay, blah, blah, blah. They're trying to stop the inevitable, which is a full-on conflict with Greece, Cyprus, possibly Egypt against Turkey, preventing Turkey from exploring further. This was also reported in the Greek Times. Turkey is recruiting Syrian mercenaries to be sent to the Greek borders. I'll come to the Trump news regarding Sudan and Israel. That's going to be a little more detailed, but let me just cover these news reports to you, friends, because, again, it's a part of a bigger picture of that whole region, what's taking place. Several things are happening, friends, all at once, and we need to be watchful, uh, not major on minors, but I'm just focusing on what I believe, what I consider to be major news in that region, friends, okay? An Armenian journalist known for being one of the first to highlight that Turkey was recruiting Syrian mercenaries to fight against Armenian forces in Ardosk has now reported that Turkey is recruiting more mercenaries to be sent to the border with Greece. Here you go, here's your lovely jubbly mercenaries there friends. Abraham, a Syrian born Armeni Armenian journalist revealed through leaked conversations between Idlib based terrorists that Turkey is now recruiting Syrian mercenaries to be sent to the Greek border. The armed news reporter in his daily bulletin on Wednesday said it is being spread among Syrian militants in Idlib that war between Greece and Turkey is highly possible. This is what I'm saying. This isn't just, you know, war fear mongering. And that there are thousands of Syrian mercenaries ready to be deployed on the land border with Greece. But I thought the conflict is between Greece and Turkey. Why are Syrian mercenaries there? Because they consider him to be their leader. He's calling the shots, you guys. He's already invaded Syria. And now he's invading in, in northern Iraq. Why? Remember that region where the Antichrist is going to come from. He's preparing the ground for his, um, uh, what do you call it, his arrival. Let me show you one more time, friends. Let's go. Have I got all the maps there? The Greek Empire, which represents the leopard, the Grecian Empire, friends. This is what the Antichrist Beast Kingdom is going to comprise of. It's going to look like, as um, John wrote in Revelation chapter 13. Mark the notes of um, the maps. This was the Medo Persian Empire, which was represented by the bear and um, the silver, the bronze, hold on, <laughs> the gold, the silver, the bronze. This is the silver Medo Persian Empire. These whole regions are where he's meddling. It looks like these former, this is the Babylonian Empire, friends. So the Antichrist Beast Kingdom is going to come out of this region here, friends. You see why it's not a one world government. I include Pakistan, all this thing up here. That's the region. Please refer back to my older videos. I went through this in detail, friends. But it's good to be repetitive. So we remind ourselves when all these other truth and news channels are out there saying Trump is the Antichrist or Macron 
is the Antichrist. They're, they're not reading the word of God, friends. His mercenaries, he clicks his fingers and they do as he says, as, he's, as he commands them. Remember who it was that funded and supported ISIS, it was Turkey. Kasparian says that as Turkey is hosting thousands of Syrian militants, Ankara is planning another local location to burn them as Azerbaijan will not be enough to get rid of them all. The Syrian war that has been waging since 2011 is almost at an end. Turkey is the only regional state that continues to support extremist militants in the war-torn country and is unwilling to relinquish control of, it, of Idlib province, prolonging the suffering. Remember, this is the Greek city times .com. However, many of these Syrian militants are becoming a domestic problem in Turkey, which is part of the reason why Turkish Erdogan is dispersing them as a movable fighting force to serve his interests in Libya, Azerbaijan, Europe, and eventually one day, friends, it's going to be Israel. It now appears, though, according to Kasparian, that some of the mercenaries will be deployed on the land border between Greece and Turkey in Thrace. Kasparian, who has an impressive reliability track record, concluded this part of his daily bulletin by saying that his report will be a great gift to our fellow Greeks and their intelligence. I'm sure our Greek friends and their intelligence already have this information, but if not, then here you go. This is why they had the trilateral agreement between Egypt, Cyprus and Greece. They're preparing. His report on Syrian mercenaries preparing to be deployed in the Greek borders comes as Stephanie... The top UN envoy for Libya announced today that foreign mercenaries will depart from all Libyan territories, land, air and sea within three months. Let me move on. A couple of days ago, friends. Turkey-Africa ties in framework of Libya and East Med development and also bear in mind in the backdrop, Sudan. African countries, which already have fragile economies, are negatively affected by the Libyan crisis. After 2011, the large investments made by Muammar Gaddafi regime in many Afri African countries were terminated. So Africa, let's not forget, this whole continent is completely torn by war, famine, natural disasters. There have been religious conflict there between, let's say, for example, in Sudan, the Darfur, conflict christian persecution across africa is not stopped it's still continuing even in nigeria it's horrendous you guys the seizure the seizure of libya's assets in some african countries has also been a factor that strains relations in the region from time to time remember in the gog magog alliance sudan it is mentioned and is libya so it's important that we look and find out what is taking place here because we are able to gauge the timeline of events friends so we can wisely count our days and wisely use the time for the Lord's glory let me get to the point where I wanted to touch on in particular southwestern Libya is known as a region where many radical and terrorist groups are deployed and engaged in arms and smuggling activities due to the country's security deficit and political stalemates. Terrorist and criminal organizations here can easily cross into Europe, of course, just across the ocean, the Middle East or sub-Saharan African countries as they do not have border controls. For example, it is known that many terrorist factors that came to Libya through the Middle East and then moved to northern Mali have increased the security problems in Mali. Can you see how this Antichrist Beast Kingdom, being Islamic, will have no problem with those soldiers who would enlist to be their warriors? The Mujahideen, mercenaries, they'll have no problem, friends, crossing borders, jumping boats, 
violating boundaries, borders, no problem at all, friends. For example, it is known that many terrorist factors that came to Libya through the Middle East and then moved to northern Mali have increased the security problems in Mali. I thought it was worth repeating that. Apart from this, global terrorist organizations such as Al Qaeda and Daesh ISIS, are going to have new formations in the region through Libya. This war on terror is never going to end. It's never going to end until the Lord Jesus returns and he himself will bring it to an end. The Daesh linked structure known as the Desert Army which carried actions in Chad, Niger, Algeria and Libya regions was deployed in southern Libya and increased the number of weapons and members. You see how many people there that are just mental, seriously friends. Islamists, jihadists, they don't care anything for the cause of Allah. I pray that more people will leave that religion and come out from that darkness and come to the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray the Heavenly Father will draw more people who are lost toward his son that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Another issue that worries sub-Saharan African countries in terms of security is migration due to conflict. It, people are scattered, divided, disenfranchised after conflict. Let me move on. Was there anything else I wanted to touch on? This because I've been reading so much. Sometimes I miss it. This situation may cause new crises and conflicts by intensifying ethnic polarization in North Africa, Sub-Sahara in the near future like what happened in Sudan. Uh, France and Egypt's attempts to reduce the impact of Turkey are an example. While France is trying to re-establish its former colonies in Africa, such as Chad and Mali, Egypt is trying to gain the support of the tribal and tribal chiefs in the region. In fact, Cairo emphasized the neutralization of the Fayez Sarraj administration and Turkish power in Libya by hosting the leaders of the Libyan High Tribal Council on July 20th. I'm skipping through a lot. Turkey has also recently hosted the leaders of the Turug ethnicity, which has a dense population in North and West Africa. While Turug's support is important in the region, Turkey should pay attention to the potential linkages between extremist groups and criminal organizations and the local leaders. Turkey doesn't care. Media agencies and think tanks that are support, supported by Egypt and some Western actors spread disinformation, falsely accusing Turkey of supporting terrorist organizations and radicals. Daily Sabah looks to Turkey. They look to them, to him, look up to Turkey. This negative image of Turkey, which has been created, may profoundly affect the country's interest in the Eastern Mediterranean and relations with the regional countries. At this point, Turkish political leaders and assigned diplomacy officers should stay away from rhetoric and actions that could lead to speculation. Turkey's moves in Africa. I have to remember, friends, to put these article links in the description of my videos because I don't go through all of them. North Africa, the Sahel and Sub-Saharan African countries should be included carefully in Turkey's strategies for the East Mediterranean and Libyan issue. This is what I'm going to do. I just, that one sentence. Why? because it builds the Ottoman Empire nicely. If he can secure North Africa, the Sahel, Sub-Saharan African countries, including East Mediterranean, he has himself a nice revived Ottoman caliph, caliphate. President Trump. Okay, finally now. This is the whitehouse.gov statement today. President Donald J. Trump brokers a historic peace agreement between Israel and Sudan. This is cat grabbing headlines. Why? Because it is well known that Sudan and Israel are very unlikely allies. <laughs> Islamist nation, North Sudan and Israel coming into negotiations is like what are you kidding me so naturally a lot of people are thinking that this is remarkable this is gonna obviously make Trump look really good that he's pulled this 
amazing deal together and a lot of us in the prophecy world are probably thinking well isn't Sudan mentioned in Ezekiel 38 that will one day join the Gog alliances to come against Israel yes it is it is Sudan North North Sudan there's now South Sudan which is primarily Christian after decades and decades of bloodshed friends between the Muslims and the Christians in that region absolute horrendous slaughter that took place there let me continue reading this anyway they are choosing a future in which Arabs and Israelis, Muslims, Jews, Christians can live together, pray together and dream together side by side in harmony, community and peace. There's that word again. Striking another historic agreement. This is the whitehouse.gov website, friends. Trump has brokered a peace agreement between Sudan and Israel. The third such agreement between Israel and an, an Arab Muslim nation in less than three months. So this is going to make him look really good. His popularity is just going to go really like the um, polls right now. If you look at the polls between Trump and Biden, they're telling us that Biden is winning. But if you look at social media, Trump is killing it, friends. Trump is the most popular in this debate right now between Trump and Biden, which makes me think Trump's going to win the election again. Today, Israel and Sudan have agreed to make peace and to normalize their... This is the fourth time my video cut out, so I'll start again. <clears throat> In the coming weeks, the two countries will begin negotiations on cooperation. So, this is historic. Let's see what else it says in this statement. This historic peace agreement follows similar agreements between Israel and the UAE and Israel and the Kingdom of Bahrain. The expansion of the Abraham Accords to include Sudan is a significant step that will further enhance Israel's security. It's about making Israel safe and the Arabs and Israel more prosperous and create opportunities for Sudan and Israel to deepen their economic ties and improve the lives of their people. But what this is all telling me is that this is forming the Southern Alliance against the Northern Alliance, which is now forming. The Northern Alliance roughly is including Turkey, Azerbaijan, Iran, possibly China, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Turkic regions, possibly North Korea eventually. Now Russia, I'm uncertain where Russia stands at this minute. We know that it has relationships with Armenia and with Azerbaijan. Now the Southern Alliance, the UAE, Israel, Bahrain, uh, Saudi Arabia eventually will join. I believe Saudi Arabia will make the um, the role of the waqf, the guardianship of the Temple Mount, a reality, friends. I think that is very, very likely away from Jordan, but now in the care as guardian. The Saudi Arabians are probably going to secure that in order to make any public um admission of negotiation normalizations with israel even though they do have relationship with israel i believe the temple map will be key egypt is also in the southern alliance jordan now the western southern slash alliances forming our cyprus greece italy france uh, there's more in that friends it's because there's trouble in the seas there's something is stirring the waters and these nations are being trying to be a step ahead of the game a step ahead of the threat which is coming from the north we're going to see a lot more nations coming into this southern alliance friends it's scary times it's very uncertain this is all preparing for war friends basically world war all preparing for war whose side are you going to be on this is what they're doing pick your side and start to form your relationships now secure your resources get the peace deal sorted make yourselves prosperous because war makes nations suffer it weakens them and it robs them from their wealth their resources how much more should I read of this after decades living under brutal Islamist dictator dictatorship that supported terrorism, the people of Sudan are in charge and democracy is taking root. Okay. 
democracy is taking root because Bashar al-Assad is no longer there I want to move on because there's more if you put in Sudan Israel you got all these news results popping up it's all over the place Trump announces Sudan will move to normalize relations with Israel happy days Twitter statements what does Donald Trump say huge win today for the United States and for world peace in the world Sudan has agreed to a peace and normalization agreement with Israel with the UAE and Bahrain that's three Arab countries to have done so in only a matter of weeks more will follow who will follow what other nations Trump has mentioned that he would like Iran to normalize relations with Israel friends Iran <laughs> And I'm thinking, you know, that's not so crazy. If Iran wants to play smart, they will. They will. Consider it. They will consider, you know what, let's do it. This is the best way to attack Israel unsuspectedly because they won't expect any threat coming again from the north. If these regional nations enter into join the club Abraham Accord and say okay we will join in we, we want to get along Israel is no longer going to be on her guard and it's just going to be thriving surviving <laughs> having wonderful relationships with the Arabs and just thinking you know we never thought we would reach peace in our times peace and security but then sudden destruction comes doesn't it friends so Israel's enemies may very well enter into some sort of agreement with them joining the club. Now I wanted to go into a lot more depth here friends. And now I think I'm going to reserve this for a Bible study on Ezekiel 38. We're talking about the nation. I wanted to talk about, okay, where it says in um, Ezekiel 38, the nations. Let me re read that to you first of all. I wanted to go into the nations and to make sure we've got it right regarding Persia, Ethiopia and Libya are with them. With who? With Gog. These are the nations explicitly mentioned and I wanted to focus in on Libya, uh, sorry, Ethiopia, Kus or Kush. So I went in, this is for your sake friends, I've done this, I already am um, confident in the word of God disclosing to us the region not being actual uh, Ethiopia as we know Ethiopia today but Sudan northern Sudan south from Egypt now in the notes in this one on Bible hub it says Persia the land for the people who are Mohammedans and enemies to the name of Christ they're just pinpointing and confirming the regions that the Bible mentions, who are they today? Ethiopia, not the African, which is Abyssinia or Nubia or both, the old Macrobi, but the Asiatic or Arabian Ethiopia, posterity of Kush, Mohammedans to Libya, people of Africa, either now subjects or, or confederates with the Turks, and do, who are near enough to join when the effect shall demonstrate this Gog who he is. So basically they're discussing the regions, who are the nations today, also in this Bible commentary. And one more time, Ezekiel 35, I went through all the different versions of the Bible to see what words they use for Cush. Most of them use Ethiopia. There was one Bible version that had Sudan. <laughs> which was that says Kush Kush, Ethiopia Kush, Ethiopia, Sudan God's word translation used Sudan which I believe is correct if we look at this link here this is on BibleArchaeologyReport.com and it says today we're going to look at the ancient kingdom of Cush, Cush, which is mentioned frequently in the Bible. The boundaries of ancient kingdoms do not often follow our modern day country borders. Cush extended from southern Egypt 
into much of Sudan on modern maps. This nation was named after Kush, one of Ham's sons, one of Noah's grandsons. His descendants moved into the region of Nubia and became the dark-skinned people known to this day as Nubians. So who were some famous Kushite people in the Bible? Basically, it's a long piece here, but I think it's really worth linking in the description because I think it's important, historically important. The ancient kingdom of Kush covers much of modern day Sudan. Now, Sudan is split into two, isn't it? You've got northern and you've got southern. World map. Bring up the world map. One moment, friends. Just show you what I mean. North and south. Christians are now living in southern Sudan. Here you go, Ethiopia here. Mostly Christian. And now you've got Sudan, all Islamic. That is the region, I believe, Ezekiel. 38 verse 5 is telling us about but hold on a moment they've just entered into peace agreements with Israel it's because Bashar al-Assad the Islamist is no longer in power now what do, what will Turkey say about that we'll find out what does Hamas say about it and I went on to look at relations between Ethiopia and Israel to see is there any actual um dangerous hostility existing between them no there isn't but you can read up their relations online yourself friends Sudan and Israel relations they've just updated this today Israel and Sudan relation refers to diplomatic ties between Israel and Sudan officially the two countries up until 2020 did not have bilateral relations but according to Israeli Deputy Minister of Regional Corporation Ayub Karo they maintained covert ties. On October 23rd, 2020, today, Israel and Sudan announced the establishment of formal bilateral ties for the first time, making Sudan the fifth Arab nation after Egypt, Jordan and UAE and Bahrain, the two latter in 2020, to fully recognise the Jewish state. So that was the main criteria. Do you recognise Israel being a Jewish state? And are you willing to normalize negotiations with them, work together? Here, it was reported on persecution.com a couple of days earlier about this. They caught wind of what was going to um, be announced. The, the United States has stated that they are ready to remove Sudan from the state sponsors of terrorism list. The only stipulation is that the government of Sudan must pay $335 million to the victims of several terror attacks that Al-Qaeda conducted years ago. There are consequences for that. Let's read on. Since the fall of um, Omar al-Bashir, the country has been working hard to prove that it is moving away from those Islam Islamic roots. However, they have reversed many of their former discriminatory laws, have transitioned to a mostly civilian-run government, and have signed a peace agreement with the rebels in several of their southern areas. President Trump tweeted, Great news. New government of Sudan, which is making great progress, agreed, agreed to pay $335 million to U.S. terror victims and families. All right, so he got a result out of it. Okay, moving on. Christianity in Sudan has been known to be a very hostile region, friends, for Christians. Sudan's Christians were persecuted under various military regimes. Sudan's civil wars temporarily ended in 72, but continued in 83, as famine hit the region. Anti-Christian persecutions grew, particularly after 1985, including murders of pastors, and church leaders, destruction of Christian villages, as well as churches, hospitals, schools and mission bases, and bombing of Sunday church services. So it's known that this region has been incredibly hostile to Christians in that region, friends. Oh. 
The Episcopal Church recognises the Martyrs of Sudan on its liturgical calendar, 16th May. The Narvaisha Agreement also technically protects non-Muslims in the north. However, some interpretations of Muslim law, Sharia, in Sudan refuse to recognise conversions out of Islam, considering apostasy a crime, and also refuse to recognise marriages to non-Muslims. Sudan is one of the nations where being a Christian is the hardest in the world. Freedom of religion and belief are system systematically violated. So they come a long way, sure, but they still have a lot of work to do, friends. A lot of work to do. Depends on how far they can go with this new leader. I don't think it's going to go down very well for much long. The Kingdoms of Kush, again, it talks about the region. The legendary Kingdom of Kush, with its capitals in what is now Northern Sudan, helped define the political and cultural landscape of Northeastern Africa for more than a thousand years. What was the Kingdom of Kush? So again, another confirmation. This We're talking about the alliance of Gog and Magog, Libya, Persia and Sudan is definitely in that alliance, friends. So don't let this sort of distract, confuse anybody because we don't know or predict the future the word of god tells us and the word of god is always accurate the next link i had here amazing bible timeline libya wanted to reconfirm with you friends is put as mentioned in ezekiel 38 chapter 5 actually libya it says libya and it is libya so we expect that region to also form close the ties with the antichrist the gog alliance that's going to form now this was reported friends check this out i hope my video does not get interrupted again this was reported in october earlier this month on the 5th the uae and the um united states look to sudan as possibly the next arab country to sign a normalization agreement this has happened all right it's happened now hamas is hoping that khartoum Sudan will stay true to its support for the Palestinians. I can't wait to hear their statement right now. The United States is present, presently, presently negotiating Sudan's removal. Okay, but Hamas were hoping that um, this is them sitting there talking. Look, <laughs> there's a kind of derby dude. Hamas Prime Minister Ismail Hanunay meets with Egyptian cleric and chairman of the International Union of Muslim Scholars, Sheikh Yusuf Karadawi and former Sudanese President Abdul Rahman Swar al Dahab after their arrival in Gaza City, Gaza Strip. Oh, this is back in May, the picture, the photograph, May 2013. So Hamas is going to be displeased with this new move, but friends, they're going to find another way to strategize. Sudan closing Hamas and Hezbollah offices in bid for US sanctions relief last year. This was in December last year. So you see all in the backdrop this stuff was taking place. Has my camera really gone off? I'm so sorry about that you guys. <laughs> so sorry. How long has it been gone off like that? Oh, should I have to start again? Friends, I'm going to eventually get used to my new computer and I'm going to make much better videos. But for now, thank you for being with me. 